filled by the Lord with the spirit of understanding, Blessed Bernard ministered streams of clear teaching to the people of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, coming together as God's family, we gather to celebrate this Eucharist, praying for an outpouring of God's Spirit upon us, called to be disciples and followers of Jesus. And so as we gather here this morning to celebrate the Eucharist, let us first and foremost take a moment to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made the abbot St. Bernard, a man consumed with zeal for your house, and a light shining and burning in your church, grant through his intercession that we may be on fire with the same spirit and walk always as children of light through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I will prove the holiness of my great name, profane among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take away from among the nations, gather you, from all the foreign lands and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all impurities and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live my statues, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your ancestors and shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. And wash away all your sins. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall return to you. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit, a hard contrite and humble. O oh God, you will not spurn. Alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then the king said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servers went out into the streets and gathered all they found, good and bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, My friend, how is it that you came here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Blind his hand, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel just proclaimed gives us this beautiful parable of Jesus inviting the guests to come and to dine with him. The king has set up the table, has prepared it, but there are those who have chosen not to come. There are those who do not want to come and be there at what has been prepared for them. And I think and oftentimes in our own journey of life, we can all relate and become like these guests that the king invited in today's gospel. Because oftentimes in our own journey, we might find ourselves a little bit too preoccupied with things that we forget about this invitation that Jesus gives each and every one of us. Sometimes we find ourselves too busy to spend a little bit of time with God. Sometimes we find ourselves a little bit too concerned with so many other things that we miss the opportunity to come close to Jesus. And the gospel just proclaimed we are reminded that God has sent out his helpers to search for each and every one of us, to go and to look for us, that each of us might be able to hear this invitation that Jesus gives us all to come to the feast, to come and to be nourished in word and sacrament, to find in him what we need to carry on in our daily lives. I think in the midst of everything that we're living and experiencing, we most can find what we need in Jesus Christ. Whether it be COVID-19, whether it be a personal struggle, whether it be a personal difficulty, whether it be a personal challenge, Jesus invites us here today and now to come. To come to him and to trust in him. To come and get close to God. Our lives, especially during these days, can be a little bit hectic. Can be perhaps a little bit busy. 
because we're all doing so many different things and trying to keep up with everything. And perhaps it is precisely in the midst of this busyness that we need to stop. That we need to stop and come close to Jesus. That we need to allow the Good Shepherd to walk with us. To be our companion along the journey. As we gather here today, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus has not only invited us, but most importantly, has chosen us to be here, to be fed in word and sacrament. May none of us ever move away from that invitation. May none of us ever step away from being fed in word and sacrament by our God. Come to the feast. Come to be nourished and word and sacrament. Those are the words of the Good Shepherd to us today. May all of us open our hearts and our lives to receive that gift today and always. Amen. And now we stand, and as a people preparing for the heavenly banquet, let us place our needs before God. That the Holy Spirit may graciously watch over church leaders as they continue to lead their flock in the way of Christ's peace and love. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may guide our civil leaders in working diligently to raise up the lowly within the communities they serve. Let us pray to the Lord that those who suffer from affliction in mind and body may be blessed with Christ's peace, especially in the midst of this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may strengthen our parish community as a body of Christ in doing His work on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have died, especially Robert Navarro for whom this Mass is offered, that he and all the faithful departed may enjoy the eternal feast with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, let us present our own needs to our loving and merciful God. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, you are the judge of all that is right and good. Hear our prayers and grant them according to your holy will. For we offer them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> 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 
we offer to your majesty, O Lord, the sacrament of unity and peace as we celebrate the memorial of the abbot St. Bernard, a man outstanding in word and deed, who strove to bring order and concord to your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to, express, to, ex, to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the fo food we have received, O Lord, as we honor St. Bernard, work its effect in us, so that strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, we may be caught up in love of your incarnate word, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.